Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper Trader, Guide Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with my little VidCam gal, pretty Miss Sheila behind the camera. I gotta bring her out here on camera some more. I want to show you something that I've been wanting to tape for a long time. It's the difference between a food saver, and there's nothing wrong with them, and a chamber vac machine, which I've owned for years. First of all, let's take a look at the what I call the standard food saver vac bag machine and see how that works. Now for those of you that have food savers, you know how this works. For those of you that don't, I'm going to show you. They got a spot inside where you keep the bags. It's a roll of food saver bag. You pull out how much you want, close it, take this little cutter, and this cuts the bag off so it's the length that you want. You can make it short, long, whatever. Then you take one end of it and put it back in the food saver, close it, put it on seal only. This little green light's going to come on. It's sealing that end of the bag. Okay, now it's sealed that edge. It put a little heat strip on there and sealed it right up. What we're going to do now is we're going to, if I can get these, this little bag separated here, we're going to vacuum seal my cell phone. We'll put this in there, pretend it's a venison steak, wish it was, but now it's got to go in that chamber. The edge of it has to go inside that little chamber there because that's going to suck the air out. We're going to put it on vacuum and seal. What's going to happen is it's going to suck the air out of this bag until it's all done and all the air has been retrieved and once it feels that you'll hear the tone difference then it will seal it to seal it in the vacuum situation. Here we go. Okay, now it's sealed it, but because it had to be in here and the seal bar is out here handy dandy, that means about this much of the bag is wasted. The other side, about that much of the bag is wasted. Here is the big problem, in my opinion, with food savers. You have to have this kind of bag because it has little ridges inside that allow the air to suck from the back Let's say if you got a steak in here, when it's pulling, it has to go through these little ridges to get all the air to the front edge. Again, this is the food saver bag. has to have those ridges or it won't work in the machine. This is a chamber vac bag, 3 mil, food grade, sealed around the edge, works perfect. Now that I've retrieved my cell phone out of there, I want to look up something. Let me do a little calculating. I checked online and a 20 foot roll of this bag, eight inches wide, is $11.99. So let's do this. 12 inches in a foot times 20 feet long is 240 inches. Now if we're going to cut it off at 10, we really can't cut it off at 10 because this burns up about an inch and a half at this edge and about an inch and a half at that edge. So you already lose over 20 cuts, you lose well over a bag if not two. But let's say we could cut it at just 10. Divided by 10 is 24 bags. You're going to get 24 bags out of a 12 or a 20 foot roll, 8 inches wide, 20 feet long. Take that, 24. So let's do this here. Uh, 11.95 divided by 24 bags. That's 50 cents a piece. 50 cents for this bag. Now are you ready for this? I buy my bags at Butcher Supply here in Nashville, Tennessee. I get a thousand bags for $27.50. A thousand. They won't work in a food saver. You have to have a chamber machine. A thousand bags. That means I pay 2.7 cents a piece for these. In fact, when I take steaks out of them, I just throw them in the garbage because they're only 2.7 cents. What good does it do to save a dollar and a half on steaks at the grocery store if you got three steaks in a package when they cost you 50 cents a piece to vacuum bag anyway? Now, I understand the 
you know, cutting it off and reusing it and you do get three to five months or six months out of them, okay, but you're still paying 50 cents a bag for these because they've got you. They sell you the machine anywhere from $39.95 to $250 bucks on television now, but you have to use their patented little bag which costs you 50 cents a piece. These cost me less than three cents. Now let me show you how this chamber machine works. And I'm going to show you a little demonstration here. I got my glass that I put one pound of hamburger in. You just slide this over the top of that, turn it upside down, and you've got a pound of burger in there. And I'm going to show you how this vac seal chamber machine works. Now this is a vac master chamber machine, and let me show you how it works. We're going to lay this bag inside the chamber. And we're going to lay the edge of the bag on this little seal bar and close it. Now here's how it works. When I turn this switch on, there's a little hole in the back of the chamber. It's going to suck air out of the entire chamber. Not the bag, but the chamber. Once it reaches the 30 PSI that I like to pull it down to, it's going to snap that little bar up inside, seal the bag, then it's going to release the pressure in the chamber. But because the bag was sealed at the same 30 PSI below atmospheric pressure, it has to make a vacuum. Watch this. Okay, it's pulling the air out of the chamber, not the bag. The bag is just relaxed laying in there. Now we're going to snap the seal bar up. It's sealing and now it's going to release the air. It's going back down to normal atmospheric pressure. And when you pull it out, is that handy dandy or what? This is what's cool. I cut and wrap all my own venison. I pop a pound of burger in there and then I mash the bag flat. Again, this is one pound. Instead of having one of them tubes in your freezer taking up so much space, just vacuum seal it in a chamber machine and lay them. You can stack them up in a cardboard box. They take up virtually no room. They freeze up great. They're good for a year to two years. And man, you got your venison burger. Look how thin it is. Isn't that slick? Now let me show you something else. In this cup, I've got some soup. Let's say you make some homemade chili and you, gotta, you want to whip up a big pot of it and then freeze it. Now I know you can pour it in milk cartons or you can put it in, in the tubs, you know, whatever. But if you'll put it inside of one of these cups, turn it over and put it in your chamber vac bag. Let me show you how this works in here. Before I do that, let me explain. I cannot seal this in a food saver because it sucks air out of the bag and obviously the soup would head that way and go right into the machine and ruin it. Now they have you do all kinds of options. First of all they make a food saver bag that has a little cloth strip which is even more expensive than their regular bag or they tell you to take your product and freeze it first then stick that flat frozen chunk in the bag and then seal it. But we don't have to do any of that. Let me show you. Now again, because this is a chamber machine, it doesn't suck air out of the bag. It sucks air out of the chamber. We'll turn this on. It's sucking air out of the chamber so the liquid is just laying in the bag. It's not going anywhere. Once it reaches that 30 PSI, that's kind of what I like to drop it down to. Seal the bag. Now it's going to release the pressure in the chamber, but the bag can't come back to normal because it's sealed inside the machine. Check this out. Can you do that with a food saver machine? I think not. And let me show you something else that's really cool. I got to show you this. This is too cool. This is how I store them in the freezer. I fold it up, stick it in the door. I can put three or four packages on each shell. You can't do that with any other vac bag when it's liquid without using a chamber machine. Isn't that slick? Less than six cents for both bags. This would cost you a dollar to do these two. A dollar or a little over a nickel. It's up to you. 
Well, there you have it, less than six cents to vacuum both of these. It'd be a dollar if you use this. It has the patented little grooves so it'll suck air from the back. The patented little grooves are so it'll suck air out of your wallet along with your money. You can buy these machines for 39 bucks, 99 bucks, even up to $250 because they're going to sell you the machine. It's the same thing as if you go buy a printer at Staples, they virtually give them away. $29.95 because the ink cartridges are 40 bucks a piece. I got my handy dandy little cups. This is for my chili. This is for my hamburger. I know this will store a whole cup of chili for me and Sheila. I know this will do a pound of hamburger right about there. But if you want to get one of these vac machines, just go on eBay and type in chamber vacuum pack machine. $475 on up. They, there's some that are pretty extravagant that'll do double chambers for about two, three thousand dollars But you can buy machines today for about $475. If you're saving 50 cents every time you vacuum pack cheese or chili or anything, because you can buy a thousand bags for less than thirty dollars, why wouldn't you own one of these? This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee. I hope you subscribed to our channel. I wanted to compare these for years because I own this. This belongs to the neighbor lady. <laughs> I just wanted to show it to you. I don't own one because I don't want to pay fifty cents a bag to vacuum stuff when I can do it for less than three cents. I hope you enjoy this. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Sheila, for doing a great job back there. And I'm going to go vacuum pack the rest of my chili that's in the pot that we made tonight. See you later. And one other thing, in case you notice these knobs on here, one of them is to set how much air comes out of the chamber in case you want to put like socks or something in there to take on a camping trip in a bag and just seal it without sucking air out of the chamber. Or you can really pull it down tight if you really want to seal something up good. And this one here is to set how long that bar stays up when it clamps up inside. Does it seal a lot? because it's a real thick bag or do you turn it down so it seals only a little bit because it's a thinner mill bag and this is the neat part most of these vac machines have the same little hole the same little attachment as a food saver so you can stick that little hose in there to suck bags down turn quart jars into vacuum containers whatever they have that same attachment hole right there so you can do the same thing I just wanted to mention what those were about and not forget to put that in the video. See you later. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Cooking with Shotgun Red. If you enjoy our recipes, become a subscriber to our cooking channel and you'll be the first to know when a new recipe is posted. We'll see you next time and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. This is Shotgun Red saying thanks a lot.